Welcome to Barricade Rides, videos for motorcycle enthusiasts. We're at Emerald City, Harley Davidson in Linwood, Washington. We're with David in one of my favorite places on this planet. We're doing the 2021 Harley Davidson Road Glide Standard. And before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to my boy Jake over at Sasquatch Studios. Hook me up with this shirt. If you're looking to have some good music made, hit him up. The link will be in the descriptions. So let's get into this. Hey everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in and Barricade as always, thanks for the opportunity to do another video with you. Um, quick little story, when I first started here at Emerald City, I was absolutely dead set on a bat, on a, on a bat wing fairing. I liked the traditional bat wing, the single headlight, it just looked like a Harley. I didn't like the fact that the fairing didn't move, I thought it would be strange, all the different things that I've heard from other people. And there's this guy that works here named Doc. And Doc rides a road glide and he said to me, have you ridden one? No, I'm not gonna ride one. I don't like them, they're ugly. And uh, then I rode one. And for me, the difference with the road glide versus the street, the road glide, the fairings out just a little bit further. It just feels a little roomier. You don't feel quite as tucked into the bike as much feels a little more roomy. I also really like the fact that on this fairing, your electronics, your screen is up top. On the street, it's down lower. So when I'm riding, the gauges are right here, the screen is right here. This has so much information that I like to kind of look at as I'm riding, whether it's my music or my navigation, whatever. I just like having it so I can glance down instead of having to actually move my head. It's a, kind of a silly thing, but it's something that really adds up to me. Um, and up to about 70, the bikes are really very similar. Over 70, you're headed through Montana, those areas where there's not really even a speed limit. Um, this bike just shines. At 70 plus, it just shines. So anyway, that's, that's my story on the Road Glide. So, so I'm gonna give you a walk around on this bike. Milwaukee 8107. Now, the 114 obviously has a little bit more power, but honestly, the difference is really negligible, especially up to about 70 miles an hour. This 107 has great power. The Milwaukee 8, it's still got the four valves per cylinder, two, two valves per spark plug, so you're getting a really nice complete burn, getting a lot of airflow, opening up that engine, and an engine is a giant air pump, so the more air you can get through it, the more power it produces. So the 107 is a great engine. It also has, uh, of course, the big twins have six-speed transmission. You've got a Kevlar reinforced final drive belt, which is so incredible because it's better torque than a shaft and it's no maintenance compared to a chain. You don't have to think about your, your belt. Once you've done your 1K service and they've kind of uh, tightened up the belt from the break-in process, you just ride it, forget it's even there. Uh, so it's, it's really it's really foolproof and designed to be low maintenance and it's designed to last the life of the bike. They're really, really tough. Kevlar is the same thing they make bulletproof vests out of. So it's pretty indestructible. <laughs> um, you've also got uh, the two into one into two exhaust. The reason they do the merge is to create a little extra back pressure and at lower RPMs or in higher gears when you're really rolling on the throttle, that's what gives you that low end torque. It allows this bike to pull out of whatever RPM up to a higher RPM in any gear uh, without any problem. You don't get the chunking and clunking like you used to get on some of the older bikes. <coughs> Excuse me, cast aluminum wheels. I think they're really pretty. Now this, this is kind of a price point bike, right? This is one that, that is for those that are looking for a great value, but these wheels don't scream value to me. I think those are really pretty. I love the, uh, you know, they cast the aluminum, then they paint them, and then they leave it with this polished face on the spokes and on the rim. Really, really pretty look. And then they're wrapped in a uh, dual compound Dunlop touring tire made for Harley-Davidson. You can see the little bar and shield here. 
There's also Harley Davidson on the sidewall. So they've made these tires for us. The dual compound gives you a little harder compound in the center of the tire. That's where you spend 90% of your time straight up and down going down the highway so that's where your tire is going to wear the most so that's a little harder compound to give you a little more life but then they have a softer compound on the shoulders of the tire for cornering so it's the best of both worlds you get the longevity and great traction but then you've got that that real grippy sidewall for when you're going out and hitting some some twisties twin disc brakes up front single in the rear this bike comes standard with abs so you've got great stopping power to match the pulling power of the Milwaukee 8107. Then you've also got um, show a suspension up front, adjustable suspension in the rear. If you haven't seen the adjustable suspension, all you have to do on this bag, come over here for a second, Kyle. These two levers just unscrew. You can literally lean the bag out and there's an adjusting dial underneath here that allows you to go from zero to 30. Folks, if you've bought a touring bike and you haven't played with that, please do because it makes a tremendous difference. For most solo riders, I usually recommend somewhere in the 7 to 10 range. Um, if you've got a passenger, probably in the 15 to 20 range. But that's adjustable on the fly without tools. All you got to do is lean that bag out. So great suspension. You've got um, the touring frame, which is kind of stretched out. Uh, it's made for comfort. Uh, that suspension in the rear, really, it's all about comfort and longevity and being able to hit the road and, and do that three, 400 miles and not even really think about it. You've also got um, the bag. So that's another difference between the special and the standard. The specials have what we call the stretch bags where they kind of come down around the exhaust just a little bit. It gives you a, a tiny bit more cargo space. But a lot of people like the standard bags because it gives you just a little bit more lean angle. So on the high performance baggers, you'll see the bagger races. Those bags are actually mounted quite a bit higher than factory to give it that lean angle. Most of us aren't going out and hitting a track at 80 miles an hour, right? But it does give you a little more lean angle with the standard bags. So that's something to consider. You've also got on, um, on this bike, this one comes with the full screen um, boombox infotainment system. It's the latest from Harley Davidson. It's super bright, super clean, very fast. The navigation comes up super quickly. Um, and you've got access to your, let me go home here, you've got access to your tunes, to your navigation, to your phone. And then you can also press and hold the home button and that'll bring in a different menu where you can get things like information on your bike. This is kind of where you've been. This is where you're going. You got information on the, on the engine itself, whether EITMS is enabled. That's a feature that keeps the engine cooler and idle in, in hotter temperatures. So really nice package. The other thing that you have with the uh, Road Glide, you've got these really large storage compartments. Now they've got a USB here to plug in your phone. That charges it. It also allows you to use your phone as kind of like an iPod with the, with the system so that you can run it via wire instead of Bluetooth if you want to do that. Um, this bike has the two speakers up front, mostly for the rider. I have seen kits where you can add speakers in the lids if you want to in the bags. You can also add a, a tour pack and a rear seat with speakers if you want to make that something you put on the bike. We have included, and we put this on here at the dealership, the uh, quick release four point hardware so that you could get a tour pack or a backrest or a sissy bar or a luggage rack or something and be able to remove it really quickly and leave it at home for those days. You're just going to go out and take a, take a ride. If you're going to take a trip, you can load it up, put all the extra gear on and have a passenger really comfortable. It's already got the rear foot pegs, already has a two up seat. Let's talk about the paint. Um, Harley Davidson is known for our paint. It is, it's a magical formula really. And I, I know that from experience. I have customers that come in that have bikes that yes, they've taken care of them. And yes, they've waxed them once a year. And yes, they store them under a cover or hopefully in a garage. But you don't see the cracking and peeling and fading like you do on some other brands. 
Uh, it's a very high quality finish. It's all robotically applied. So it's very consistent, takes out the human error that could be there. Three mils of clear coat. Any of the detailing, now this bike doesn't have striping, but any of the bikes that come from the factory with pinstripes, that's all under the clear coat. So everything's protected. And by the way, that's not just your tins and your bags and your side covers. That's also the frame that's powder coated. It's the wheels. It's all the accessories. Anything that has a finish on it, even the chrome finish on the pipes, very, very high quality. This is not cheap chrome. You can get cheap chrome and put it on these bikes and two years later you know it's cheap chrome. When you get Harley Davidson chrome, it's designed to look like this for years and years and years. So with a little bit of care and proper storage, this bike can look like this in 20 years and I see it all the time. This is called Gauntlet Gray. It's a special color for 2021 and there's something about this color. Kyle, if you can get a kind of a close up of this, it's got a really soft, very light metal flake, but it, it just helps this paint really dance on this bike. And I particularly like this color against some of the black features of the bike. I like how it kind of stands out, but it's also subtle. Um, and you can get this color in a variety of bikes with blacked out, but for me on this bike, the black engine, the black accessories, this paint, and then the chrome to kind of finish it off, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful bike. Your riding position on this bike is amazing. Second to none. When you get on this thing, you just, man, let's go. Let's go. Look how, look how straight my back is. My arms aren't reaching out. They're not locked. They're nice, comfortable position, kind of wide, so you feel like you got command of the bike. Another thing about this fairing, and something that people say a lot, is they don't like the fact that the light doesn't move with your handlebars. Um, I get it. It seems like it would make sense, but for those of us that have been riding for a while, we know that 95% of the time, when we're steering this bike, we're not steering, we're leaning, right? So as you lean, your headlights follow the bike around the corner. And I rode one of these home from an event uh, about a month ago, and it was dark, and I could not believe the light in front of this bike. I had no trouble seeing whatsoever. The only time it might matter a little bit would be like in a parking lot. But hopefully you're going slow enough there and you got enough ambient light, whatever, that, that it doesn't matter. But that's about the only time when you're actually steering the bike at a really low speed, that's the only time you might notice the light. But for the most part, when you're riding, not something to worry about. One thing that it does do is it keeps some of the weight off this, uh, off this front, off the front fork, because you're not turning the weight of the whole fairing, you're just turning the weight of the front of the bike, basically. And, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> my goodness. Um, the other thing about the, uh, this front fairing, um, 2,000 hours of wind tunnel testing, so it does an amazing job of blocking the wind, not only from your hands and your face, but your, your chest. There is a vent here that can be open or closed. It's not actually a vent. What this really is designed to do is to force air at an accelerated speed to meet the air coming over the windshield, and that actually creates a little more of a bubble for you and your passenger. So don't think of this as a vent. Think of this as a way to get more air over top of your head. Amazing, amazing design. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? It's, uh, of course, comes with cruise control. It comes with all your, um, your navigation, security. Um, I mentioned the ABS. So this bike is really, really nicely equipped out of the factory. Throw a set of pipes on it, maybe do an intake and a tune. Um, man, this is a bike you could enjoy for years and years and years. It's just, just wonderful. So highly recommend, don't overlook the standards just because they're not a 114. It's a great value and I would be thrilled to ride a bike like this. Absolutely thrilled. And I, I know a thing or two about them. The difference between the 107 and 114 is negligible, uh, but you can save yourself uh, between four and $5,000 off a special by going with the standard. Definitely worth considering. All right, there you have it. The 2021 Harley Davidson Road Glide Standard. This bike is absolutely fantastic. I'm digging the color. I'm digging everything about this bike. And if 
you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, brothers and sisters, stay safe and ride your ride. Mm -hmm.